live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good Monday morning to you. It is June 22nd and Patty Santos is here for GMSA at nine. Hi. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. So be honest. How was the early morning show with me as your uh, co-pilot? You mean tour guide? Yeah, tour guide. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, it is an extensive uh, rundown of stuff that we have to do here in the mornings, right? It was fun, though. I mean, it's a different pace. Yes. Different, it's changed from, you know, being up late at night. Working the <laughs> night beat, yes. And this show is, too. And you and I have already chatted a little bit about that. Let's dive into our first talker of the morning, shall we? Yeah. Are you a saver? I am doing better. Uh, it has always been a priority, but I've kind of stunk at it, too. Oh, so you're a spender. I am a spender. How about you? I'm a saver. Are I got to be honest, I'm really cheap. I like to like keep my money and I don't like to spend. Very um, thrifty, let's just say it that that's, way. And that's not <laughs> a bad thing. More of us are wishing that we were like Patty. A new survey is finding that Americans regret their lack of emergency funds to withstand economic crises like we're going through with the pandemic. Yeah, they regretted not having enough uh, for retirement savings and having too much debt as, uh, you know, the top three. This bank rate survey found that 23% of Americans rate that as their biggest regret. And when it comes to getting finances in order while moving forward, the top financial priority was paying down debt, followed by saving more for emergencies and a large number of people who didn't know what their top financial priority should be. I mean, at least they're planning. Some of them are planning. Or, or thinking about it for the first time. They say something <laughs> needs to happen. Yes. Other priorities included saving more for retirement, living within their means, good luck with that, <laughs> and finding a more stable income. And take a look at this by age group, not enough emergency savings with a top financial regret for millennials, 24%, Generation X, which is 25%. And in contrast, not enough retirement savings was the top regret for baby boomers and generation is silent generation, which you and I were talking about. We hadn't really heard about that. The silent generation, uh, right after the greatest generation, uh, born years 1925 through about 1940, maybe 45. That who is who the silent generation is. So been staying quiet. Yeah. So clearly with all the pandemic, we've been thinking about the dollars and cents of this, haven't we? Yeah, I know I have. I, you know, I got worried. I mean, we were fine, but you just don't, you don't know what's ahead. So yeah, that's Gotta true. save even more. Even today. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. Today, a major milestone. New York City, once the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic, will enter phase two of reopening. But doctors are sounding the alarm elsewhere. At least 11 states set record highs in cases this weekend. Texas officials are temporarily suspending the alcohol permits for bars in violation of COVID-19 protocols. The Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission says it conducted a three-day undercover operation. Investigators found crowded scenes like these at a dozen bars in Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Austin. CDC researchers have been conducting a scientific review about the masks during the pandemic. Scientists wanted to study if they protect people from contracting COVID-19, not just preventing them from spreading it. The CDC has already published guidance on its website, but the new guidance is expected soon. A new detail from John Bolton's first broadcast interview about his bombshell book. The former Trump National Security Advisor told ABC's Martha Raddatz, that the November election is the last guardrail to protect the country from President Trump. And he hopes Trump will be a one-term president. Tension on the street of Los Angeles County Sunday. Protesters there demanding answers about the fatal shooting of Andres Guardado. In New York, an NYPD officer is suspended without pay after he's caught on camera allegedly using a chokehold. The statue of President Teddy Roosevelt is being removed. Critics say it depicts black and indigenous people as racially inferior. And in North Carolina, cheers and music accompany the removal of a 75-foot tall Confederate statue in Raleigh. Overnight, outrage after NASCAR says a noose was found in the garage of Bubba Wallace, the only black driver who races full time in NASCAR's Top Cup Series. A record price tag for a famous guitar. The instrument used to be used to be owned by Nirvana singer Kurt Cobain. He played it during the band's legendary 1993 acoustic show on MTV. That guitar sold at auction over the weekend for a record six million dollars the rarest and best views of Sunday's partial solar eclipse. It was from on board the International Space Station. Astronaut Chris Cassidy posted these pictures. 
I don't think you could take a bad picture from space, no do you? No kidding. <laughs> oh, that's definitely a room with a view. Here at home, we are waiting on the dust to arrive. And earlier, Patty and I were talking about it. If you haven't washed your car yet, don't. Just go ahead and hold off. <laughs> Just Justin? wait. Yeah, you might you might want to wait this week because not only are we going to see some dust, we're going to have some rain chances too, and that might equate to some mud. It might mess up the car a little bit. Uh, we're going to wait for that dust to come in a little bit later this week. Right now, we've got temperatures sitting at 80 degrees at the airport. 76 Q Valley, 83 in Del Rio. It's a warm start. Also very humid. Next couple days, temperatures will come down some. We're expecting 97 today, hot and humid. But some chances for some storms, both Tuesday and Wednesday. We could even see a little bit of rain tomorrow morning. I'll talk about that uh, chance coming up here in just a bit, too. Let's take a look at the radar right now. There are some showers out there. You'll see those east of San Antonio along I-10. A little outflow boundary coming through, and that is helping to kick off a little bit of activity. We'll zoom in a little bit closer there. Places like Lavaca County uh, around Howitzville, seeing a couple of showers starting to move in this morning. So it could be a little bit wet there. Pollen count shows everything's in the low category. No big issues in your forecast here in San Antonio. Things stay dry. 97, the high temperature heat index up around 102, maybe even higher in some cases. We're going to talk about uh, that busy forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. All right. Thanks, Justin. Well, the time right now, 903. This is at I-37. I-35 at Evans Road. You can see traffic moving along pretty nicely there. Also there at I-10 and near Loop 410. There's a look at uh, 1604 and Bandera Road. Traffic pretty smooth for a fun Monday morning. Top stories we're following today. A woman is recovering in the hospital this morning after she was shot twice overnight. Police tell us it happened just before 4 this morning in the 3300 block of Jenkins Drive. That's on the northeast side. Police say the victim was shot by a man who she says she doesn't know. She was taken to the hospital with life-threatening gunshot wounds. Now, according to police, the victim, along with two other witnesses, were being uncooperative and not giving much information as to what exactly happened. The investigation is ongoing. And we are still waiting to learn the name of a man who died this morning after being involved in a motorcycle crash. And police say it happened just after one this morning in the 11,900 block of Crosswinds Way on the northeast side. According to police, the victim failed to make a turn. That's when he struck the curb and lost control of his motorcycle. And police tell us the victim also struck a fire hydrant before he fell off the bike. The man was wearing a helmet but did not survive the crash. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic on your Monday morning. After a recent spike in new cases of COVID-19, more testing sites are popping, popping up in and around San Antonio. Yesterday, the Bear County reached a record high of 538 new cases. And then for those wanting to get tested, a drive through testing site will be open this morning on the far west side of town. Today, from 8 this morning until 4 p.m., testing will be conducted at the Bear County Emergency Services District 2 Fire Station 120. That's located at 2096 Tally Road. Now, in order to get tested at this location, you must set up an appointment by calling this number. It's on your screen. Area code 512-883-2400. Again, 512-883-2400 to schedule that appointment. And Governor Greg Abbott is expected to hold a press conference this afternoon to update on Texas's continued response to the coronavirus pandemic. This comes after more than 3,800 COVID cases have been reported just since Saturday. The conference expected to start about 2 this afternoon. We'll be live streaming it on KSAT 12 and KSAT.com. Be sure to stick with us for the latest coverage on the coronavirus pandemic. And we also want to remind you that a Judge Nelson Wolf's latest executive order goes into effect today. Face coverings are required at all businesses in Bear County. This order will continue until June 30th. In your morning headlines at just about 9.07, investigators still looking into a shooting during a block party in North Carolina. And we have an update on a wildfire in the state of Arizona. Also, a volcano erupted twice within a matter of minutes in Indonesia. And follow a sea turtle into the deep. David Sears is back. Hello, David. Hi, David. Good you were morning. off for a week. Good to see you, off sir. We missed week. you. Well, thanks. Glad to be missed. <laughs> you are. You were. I don't know. <laughs> we'll get to the sea turtle in just a second, but first, a block party turned violent and then deadly in North Carolina this morning. There were two dead and nearly a dozen injured, some by gunfire and some were hit by cars speeding away from the scene. It was a continuation of a Juneteenth party over the weekend. Police first carved out for a hit and run. When they got to the scene, they found hundreds of people hanging out in the streets. While they were there, they heard the gunshots. Police say there were several shooters and dozens of shots were fired. A female shot died at the scene. Another victim pronounced dead at the hospital. There were several others wounded.
There were a total of nine people shot. Uh, two of them are confirmed deceased. Uh, and there are also five people who were injured that were struck by vehicles as, this, as they fled the scene. Yeah, most of those who were hit by vehicles were trying to get away from the scene. As he said, all the victims are expected to recover. The investigation is underway. No arrests have been made as of right now. Hey, you are looking at the Bighorn Blaze. This is in Arizona. This is just north of Tucson, Arizona, and that fire is growing. It's burned in the neighborhood of 50,000 acres so far. There are nearly 900 firefighters battling that blaze. Here's the good news. A portion of that fire is moving toward a desert area. More sand, less vegetation to burn. All right, let's take it to Indonesia and watch closely right there. Watch it, you'll see it again. Boom, that is a volcano erupting. Actually blew its stack twice yesterday. The eruptions happened within 14 minutes of each other. And you can see the thick ash folks are having to deal with. Mount Merapi is known to be highly active. Back in 2010, that volcano erupted and killed 300 people. And finally this morning, your feel good video to get your week started. How about that turtle right there? That's Maisie. She is a rare hybrid hawksbill green sea turtle. She was rescued about a year ago, had a rare virus. Hospital staff removed several tumors, got her some antibiotics, some healthy seafood and greens, and she's good to go. They put a tracking device on her to follow her migration over the next three months. The Sea Turtle Conservancy organized the event as part of their educational project. There she goes. Say goodbye to Maisie. Hey, sea turtle. And they're monitoring all the threats and see how they can survive in, in the deep. So they, It's like, is there something back there? I, I can't see it, but I, I feel something in the middle of my shell. Yes, Slow shake down it off. the uh, let her speed a little bit as she's swimming. Yeah, but boy, she, pretty cool. she was anxious to take off. Yeah. All right, David, thank Welcome you. Home. All right, appreciate it. Right now we are at 909, 80 degrees. You're still watching GMSA at 9. A mountain lion was seen strolling through the streets in San Francisco. What one biologist advises families to do if they ever see one in the neighborhood? How about run? That too. Businesses all across the country have felt the impact of the pandemic. What one local burger shop has had to do to stay afloat. And right now, let's take a look at stocks. They are up right now about 45 points at 25,916. Welcome back to Team SA at 9. Businesses all across the world have been suffering quite a bit amid the pandemic, so they've had to adapt to survive and stay afloat. And Max, Max Massey shows us one business owner right here in San Antonio had to make some pretty drastic changes to keep his burger spot on the east side alive. You know, I, I like burgers. You know, most people don't like their product, but I'm a, I'm a burger guy. I like burgers. Mark Outing is the owner and operator of Mark's Outing. It may not be the fastest made burger in the world, but it's going to be good. He opened this spot on East Commerce with a business partner 15 years ago, and he opened it with little capital and a big dream. I was a car salesman, and we just kind of threw around a couple of ideas of maybe one day starting a restaurant. At the start of 2020, Mark's Burgers were feeding hundreds of people a day. Then the pandemic hit. You're wondering, okay, how am I going to feed my family? How am I going to take care of these bills in this building? Those things are all real. At one point, Mark had to go down to just three employees on the payroll. We made a uh, somewhat of a to-go, drive-up type of a deal. You could pull up and, and uh, we call them location lots. And then he got even more creative. So what could we do for curbside delivery? And so we decided, okay, let's just put a window here. And so that's what we did. We built a window out so the customers can come in. We had a, a, a menu board put up. The combination of loyal customers outside the box thinking. Good food and uh, good service. We try to have a good atmosphere. It all went a long way. So Mark, I gotta ask, why are you so passionate about burgers? Why are you so passionate about cooking? I think I, I really just enjoy cooking and I think Americans love burgers and I love burgers and I just like to make uh, people happy when they're eating a the burger. His ingenuity saved the business. Well, right now it is it's extremely busy. Max Massey. I guess some people hate their job. I don't. KSAT 12 News. And Mark's outing is over there on East Commerce, and I'm looking at their website right now for You're putting some of the an order burgers. In, aren't you? Well, I want to. <laughs> so they've got normal burgers and like a bacon burger and an avocado burger here, and then I was, I was thinking that was it. Oh no, he's got way more than that. He's got a jalapeno burger, a mushroom burger, a chili burger, winning. Uh, also, an ice cream burger. 
Uh, a I barbecue burger. And then earlier I was talking about that I haven't tried a burger with a uh, fried egg on top yet. Mm -hmm. I think he's got it. It's a breakfast burger. And uh, the four ounce is six ninety nine. The the big boy size, which is the one I would eat, uh, nine forty nine each. But anyway, MarksOuting.com, the website for that place that Max checked so out. So we're we putting orders in now. So for sure, drop off. Why not? Avocado. Let me double check we'll their hours. It's still delivery well. available through our partners. So there that's a know. yes. All right, your treat, right? Sure. <laughs> All right, Justin, um, you heard it. He's treating yeah. us. Big boy size. I can do <laughs> it. I can do it. Hey, do we have another junior meteorologist to start out the week? We do. We got a four-year-old. This is Camila. Did a great job. Take a listen. Oh, well, the brother's there, too. We got yeah. the His Her co-anchor. Exactly. It's a good that's, look. That's a great so team. So adorable. And it's, the little unicorn umbrella to top things off. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. It's it's perfect look. It's all about the accessories. Yeah. <laughs> great job, guys. We love it. Uh, we love all the junior meteorologists. And again, you can go uh, to our website. It's under the weather tab. You can sign up to be a junior meteorologist, send in those videos. We love to see them. Okay, let's talk weather now. And first, let's start with the aquifer. As of this morning, it's down six tenths of a foot to 661 even. Why is this significant? Because that 660 mark is getting a little bit closer. The 10 day average now at 662.9. That may go down actually a little bit today. We're getting awful close to that 660 mark. And that's when we start talking about restrictions. We're not there yet. We got a little bit of time before we get there. But unless we see some rain, we're headed in the wrong direction. There is some rain in the forecast, though. That's the good news. Looks like we could see some showers and storms as early as tomorrow. Take a look at the radar right now. We do have some showers out there, actually, to our east, not here in San Antonio, but places like Shiner, Howitzville, over towards Gonzales. Seeing a little bit of activity right now. These are all tracking off to the south. There'll be a quick downpour, and that's really about it. You're not going to see much more. Uh, out of those and they should move along. Let's take a look at the future clouds and precipitation. And as we look forward in time here, we're going to go to tonight and notice that there's not a lot going on, but we may see some activity up there across parts of North Texas. And when we do, this may form into a cluster and then eventually work its way south by say tomorrow morning. So I think we could see a couple showers tomorrow morning and then tomorrow afternoon. The model is also showing some activity flaring back up depending on where some of these outflow boundaries are. So there's some more chances of rain through the day and it's possible if we get some storms in the afternoon that there could be a few stronger storms mixed in there. That's something we'll have to watch so tomorrow about a 30% chance of rain. And again, it's really going to depend on what happens to our north, but we keep you posted there and even in the Wednesday, we'll have some more chances for showers and storms. There will be some moisture around. Then we are also dealing with the Saharan dust. You've probably heard about it by now, but there's a nice plume of it moving across the Atlantic, an unusually large plume. We'll get a little bit of it Tuesday, tomorrow. I don't think it's really any big deal. It's probably Thursday into Friday when we really start to see the bulk of this moving in. And what it means for us, some hazy skies, some vibrant sunsets, and if you're allergic to dust or you have asthma, it may flare that up just a little bit. It's not going to be a huge issue, but it is something you want to keep in the back of your mind. And uh, that'll be around Thursday into Friday and may stick around even into the weekend. So just a heads up there, you can see how widespread it is. It includes uh, really much of the southeastern part of the country and uh, here in Texas. OK, let's go outside for you. It's a little hazy right now, but that's not dust. That's just the humidity, some low clouds as we look off into the distance here and look at the downtown San Antonio. It's warm, 80 degrees. Dew point is at 72 calm winds at this hour. And you can see the cloud cover that is built in here across Bear County. We are seeing some breaks off to the east and uh, temperatures 81 Port SA, 82 Castroville, 75 right now, Bernie. 77 in Uvalde. Sunny skies out there in Del Rio. You're sitting at 83. And we mentioned some of those showers trying to pop up there across our eastern counties with an outflow boundary. Dew points are plenty high. Dew point in Gonzales, 77. That's way up there. And that's going to contribute to a heat index today. So this is the forecast heat index at 5 o'clock. This is your feels like temperature. And it's going to be into the triple digits in a lot of spots. Even here in San Antonio, it could be feeling like 104 a little bit later this afternoon. Forecast for today up around 97 breezy. We'll get southerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour and then uh, tomorrow 94 30% chance of rain a 40% chance Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We'll have some of that dust around too. So 
It's possible that could mix with some of the rain, a little bit of mud perhaps. Uh, and then by the weekend, it looks like rain chances will start to wind down. Guys? What an interesting way to start the first full week of summer. I know, right? Just a little dusty. Thanks, Justin. Yep. Talk to you in a bit. 921, 80 degrees. We'll still ahead on GMSA. A famous bus stuck in the Alaskan wilderness is removed. And a mountain lion creeps through the streets in San Francisco. More on those stories in today's Take a Look at This. A mountain lion on the prowl in San Francisco and a bus gets an airlift out of the Alaskan wilderness. ABC's Steve Nannis has a look closer look in today's Take a Look at This. While the people of San Francisco were sleeping, a mountain lion was on the prowl. Security cameras captured the young lion wandering the streets Wednesday night. It was later captured and taken to a wildlife preserve. A biologist says the young lion probably got lost. They also say it was never a threat to humans, but you should probably keep your small pets inside if you hear one in your neighborhood. You will no longer be able to trek into the Alaska wilderness in search of an abandoned bus made popular by the 1996 book Into the Wild. Several people have been injured trying to reach the bus over the years, and at least two people have died. So the Department of Natural Resources and the Alaska Army National Guard removed the bus. It will go into storage until the Department of Natural Resources decides what to do with it. For Take a Look at This, I'm Steve Nannis. And now we bring you some good news. Amazon's Big Style Sale 2020 is underway today, just in ordering as we speak. Uh, the company <laughs> says it will include big price cuts on top name brands and Amazon's own in-house lines. So far, it's unclear how long the sale will last, but it's expected to go on at least for a couple of days. And it's been over three months since the Eiffel Tower closed due to the coronavirus pandemic. That is the longest closure since World War II, but visitors will now be able to tour the popular attraction starting this Thursday. Everyone over the age of 11 will be required to wear a mask and only a limited number of people will be allowed to visit at once. The reopenings continue 926 80 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Still ahead on GMSA at 9 from a Garth Brooks drive through concert Christmas in July to a unique Amazon delivery. Erica Hernandez joins us live with more on these trending stories in today's What's Up KSAT. Plus, how a father and daughter started a movement to spread joy to others during these tough times. And Trans Guy, 35 at 410. Traffic is sailing smoothly in all directions right now. We'll be right back. Night 30, welcome back. In times like these, a smile can go a long, long way. Are you smiling? I'm smiling. Well, a dad-daughter duo in Kentucky is starting a movement one smile at a time. Kate Springer with WDRB in Louisville has this heartwarming story. Moo, you're my brown-eyed girl. Maddie Ray loves to dance. Get a peanut. She loves her family. <laughs> and while she can't tell you herself, her smile says it all. <laughs> the beauty of her smile and want to share it with the world. <laughs> Maddie has Down syndrome and is nonverbal, but it doesn't take much for her to communicate. So much. <laughs> when nothing else seems clear, it's Maddie's face lighting up that provides clarity for her dad, Michael. When I always needed to be uplifted, I always had one constant thing in my life. And that was her. He wondered if Maddie's grin could do that for him. <laughs> what could it do for others? What can we do now to take how she has changed my life to impact the lives of strangers? Smile Project Louisville started with a photo in a Wendy's drive through in the spring of 2018. I said I would love to take a picture to remember us smiling together in this moment to say, you know, thank you to us. Hey guys, look, dynamic duel here today. Never knowing a moment would become a movement. This little platform that I created really just to create change in my life and within our community, and I often say we live in a very special community in Louisville, has resonated well beyond the city of Louisville. Are you ready to go see President Anita? Let's go. Now he travels around the area with Maddie, spreading hope and happiness, something that costs nothing, but the payoff is huge. Smile after smile, story after story, at first taking pictures of strangers throughout the city and now granting random acts of kindness. People started nominating 
people and would be like, you know, telling the story of why somebody needed a smile. I'm going to socially distance these balloons. That takes a little creativity these days. We've used 10 foot poles and I, I put giant plastic over me to hug it out with people. Each one a chance to change someone's day, someone's life. We're going through some crazy times, whether it's a pandemic and, and, and all the stuff recently, um, uh, you know, with race relations, is that if you lead with love and you find love in your heart, you have the ability then to go around and smile at complete strangers. It's, it's, real. it's, it's, real, man. it's real, man. He recently took his message to 28th and Broadway outside the looted, boarded up Kroger, an act of kindness that tripled right in front of his eyes. It happened to be James, and, it, and it's an amazing moment. We have a hundred hours you to go into Kroger's and shop. It's that kind of moment he hopes to continue spreading with Maddie by his side. I tell people we smile because life is hard, not easy. Dad and daughter using a special hey, smile to spread a message. No words necessary. Be the reason someone smiles today and I say, hey, give him a kiss, blow him a kiss. Right. Ah. <laughs> That was Kate Springer from WDRB in Louisville reporting. I know it got me smiling, but also gave me the feel goods, and I want to cry, Little Justin. Teary. <laughs> Outside with live cam, back to Justin. And, and you, you said it earlier, the dust is on the way, but it's not here yet. Don't be deceived by that live cam shot. Right? Yeah, it does look crazy out there, but the, the dust really is probably going to settle in later this week. That's when we're going to really see it uh, show up in, in, in great numbers. And even then, it's not a huge thing to worry about, but it is going to be around. And we'll, we'll detail some of uh, what you can expect with that coming up. Uh, what you need to know, hot. Heat index could be 102 plus today. It's going to be really hot and humid this afternoon. Potential for storms coming up tomorrow. We could even see a couple strong storms. Not out of the question. Uh, and then some more rain chances by the uh, well by the middle part of the week and into the end of the week. And then the dust, of course, as we've been talking about this morning. Radar shows we've got some showers uh, mainly east of San Antonio. You see some of the activity up there around Waco as well. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here. So the rain has moved through Hallettsville. It's just to your south now, but places like Shiner. Down to Yoakum, you could see some of this rain, and then just south of Gonzales, too, seeing a couple showers pop up. Looks like this will stay east of San Antonio, but maybe a shower there in eastern Bear County uh, as we go here over the next shower or so. Uh, temperatures are warm, 80 Helotus, 80 at the airport, 81, Randolph, 81 in Floresville. We're going to keep things dry today up to 97. But again, that heat index is what will get you with that humidity, and we've got a good southerly breeze today, too, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Guys? All right, thanks, Justin. Take a look outside at your drive. Everything looks pretty smooth out there. It is 933, and uh, hopefully your commute is safe today. We talk a lot uh, every once in a while on this newscast about how uh, awesome the musical Hamilton is. A lot of folks have already seen it, but there are tons of folks that have not had a chance to go see either the traveling production or go to Broadway or any other cities. Have you seen been. it? I saw it. I was lucky enough to see it in London of all places. Wow. It was very. See, I knew you were a classy guy. Uh, well, it was, <laughs> it was amazing. And um, I had heard that years ago they had filmed the Broadway production, and then we revealed that not only was it coming to the theaters, they were going to rush it out onto Disney plus coming up July 3rd and now we can tell you that the trailer is now out for Hamilton on Disney plus yeah the, if you're not familiar with it this is a rap inspired musical about founding father Alexander Hamilton's life that was originally supposed to come to theaters in October but because of everything going on everything was rushed and so they're hoping to move that up that's right. So it's launching on Disney Plus July 3rd. The minute long trailer shows off footage from Lynn Manuel Miranda's Broadway musical. In the trailer, fans will surely recognize music from the iconic opening number, Alexander Hamilton, and Goldsberry's show stopping song, Satisfied, interspersed with scenes from the show. And now Disney paid $75 million for the rights to Miranda's musical. And of course, this is a mighty fee for a show that premiered in Broadway in 2015. But it won so many awards mm -hmm. and it's so popular that I'm pretty sure they're going to make up that money. Now here's the hiccup. Uh, this week some Hamilton fans were dismayed to find out the <laughs> Disney Plus stopped offering free trials less than three weeks before the musical is set to premiere. Why do you think they did that? I hmm. have no idea, but there are still plans for a big screen version of Hamilton. It's just a ways off. But yeah, July 3rd, I think that's next Friday is when we'll finally get to see this 
on Disney Plus. And get this, there were 54 million plus subscribers in May. And of course, or with the Disney pandemic, plus. everybody's watching more Disney Plus. Yeah, they did right? very well with their launch, didn't they? Do you they? think you'll watch that again, even oh, though I you've know already it. seen it? Oh, yeah, because I've seen, I mean, the cast in London was amazing, but I want to see the the elite, the, the original cast, including all these stars, Leslie Odom and Philippa Sue and all of them. Yeah, I've got to see this. Yeah, all right. Well, we've got other headlines. And as the need for food assistance continues to grow in San Antonio amid the pandemic, KSAC community is partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank to provide some relief. All month long, you can donate to the Spurs Cafe Spurs Give Together Fund. The initiative helps local restaurants prepare meals for those in need in San Antonio. Food Bank says around 200,000 kids in Bear County are at risk for hunger this summer. That's a lot of kiddos. To donate to the Spurs Give Together Fund, just head to the KSAT community section of KSAT.com. For every dollar donated, seven meals will be given to people in need. We're glad you're with us this morning. Right now it's 937, 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Calling all country music fans, tickets for Garth Brooks' drive through concert are on sale now. And how does Christmas in July sound? Good. What do you think? Yeah, me too. Especially the weather. Erica Hernandez joins us live with all you need to know about these stories in Next in What's Up KSAT. Christmas in July, a teen plays a prank on an Amazon driver and Garth Brooks live in San Antonio and New Braunfels. Sign me up for that. Yeah. Our Erica Hernandez is joining us live from home. Hey, Erica, what's trending today? Hey guys, good morning. morning. And that is right, Garth Brooks will be live in San Antonio and New, Dr and New Braunfels for his drive through wow. concert. If you haven't heard about this? No, not yet. How it You're the works. first one telling me. Tell me about it. Okay, let me tell you. On June 27th, Garth Brooks will broadcast his concert at 300 drive-in theaters across the nation, and that includes the drive-in at Six Flags Fiesta Texas and the Stars and Stripes drive-in at New Braunfels. Tickets went on sale last Friday and are $100 per vehicle, and there is a limit to six people per vehicle. According to Ticketmaster, parking will be based on a first-come, first-served basis. The event will adhere to social distancing guidelines and will follow state and local health mandates. Brooks said in a statement that the drive-in concert, quote, allows us all to get back to playing live music without the uncertainty of what would, could, what would be the result to us as a community. I think this is great to start seeing some concerts. I mean, this is probably the only option they have right now for them to go live um, through these drive throughs But I don't know, $100 a car, it's kind of... I don't know what you, what do you guys think about that? Fill the car up and you, maybe you got a deal. Yeah. I read something about somebody doing a performance recently to um, you know a lot full of, of cars and they said it was amazing the feedback they got from the car horns. <laughs> well, I think this is the only option they have right yeah. now, so it's, it's interesting to see what their creative ways are Agreed. going to. Yep. Next up, have you seen this video yet? Lynn Safari of Magnolia, Delaware needed a new pet playpen and ordered one on Amazon, but she failed to see the additional instructions her teen had added in the delivery instruction section of the order. He wrote, knock on the door three times, scream abracadabra as loud as you can, and run super fast away. As you can see, the Amazon worker did just that. They caught it all on their Nest camera. Lynn posted on the video on Facebook, and it immediately went viral. Lynn even posted an apology to the Amazon worker, saying she knows her son shouldn't have done that, but for her to have the energy and attention to detail, just put a smile on our faces. All right. So uh, yeah. Got to check out that video because we only had a little still shot on there, but I, it's on our website at ksat.com, right? Yeah, it's embedded into the article, and okay. it, you'll see the Amazon worker knocking, and then she runs away really fast. It's pretty hilarious. I got to see this. Uh, knock on the door three times, scream abracadabra as loud as you can, and run super fast away. Okay. That's kind of mean, though. I mean, like, imagine that would be really awkward. It's mean to fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and finally, grab some ice cubes to pop into your hot chocolate and plan on enjoying Christmas in July on the Hallmark Channel. Hallmark will once again host this annual event offering up some of their Christmas content during the warmer months. This all starts on June 29th, and three Christmas movies will be shown a night until July 27th. Right now on this article, we have a list of some of the movies that will be coming out. This is my favorite time of year when, when you get to sit down and during the holidays and see these Hallmark movies, so this is exciting for me. The Christmas and Hallmark, you are speaking my love language mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> Now let's go to your national days of the week. Uh, today is National Onion Rings Day. Tomorrow is National Let It Go Day. 
Wednesday is National Pralines Day. Thursday is National Bomb Pop Day. Friday is National Coconut Day and Take Your Dog to Work Day, which I'm sure you can hear mine. We can hear it. It must be today. (laughs) Saturday is Sunglasses Day and Pineapple Day. And Sunday is National Ceviche Day. Mm. Oh, sign me up for Sunday. Uh, ceviche sounds good. All right, Eric Hernandez yes. live at home with a barking dog, which we sure <laughs> we're sure is adorable. <laughs> Give him we'll a treat. Him next time. Maybe I'll take your dog to work day. I'll bring him in. Perfect. <laughs> That's a deal. <laughs> Erica, thank you. All right, I, let's check in with Justin Horn here. Yeah, let's do that. He's over there. He's all dressed nice. Might as well let him talk, right? No, yeah, well, hey, listen, Biggie is just adding in some background noise there. That's Eric's dog. <laughs> <laughs> right. like, Very cool. What's his name? The rapper? Biggie? Biggie? Biggie oh, like yeah. Biggie Smalls? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's take a look at the radar. We'll show you we got some showers out there right now, uh, mainly off to the east of San Antonio. That's a long and outflow boundary, and it is kicking up uh, some thunderstorm activity, especially around Houston. And some of our eastern counties getting a little bit of rain this morning. Some welcome rain, I might add. Uh, just not much here around San Antonio. So let's zoom in a little bit closer. Places like Gonzales. Looks like the showers maybe just missed you. Maybe got a few sprinkles there. We've seen a little bit of rain around Howitzville and then uh, Shiner, Quero, uh, down to Yorktown. You should see a couple showers. They tried to make it uh, a little bit further west around Seguin, but not much there. And again, not much here in Bear County. So things are going to stay pretty quiet. I think uh, for us, but let's take a look at the future clouds and precipitation. This is uh, one of our computer models and by this evening, not much there. I think we stay pretty quiet today, but uh, we'll have to watch what goes on across North Texas tonight. That could push a few showers in tomorrow morning. And then once we get towards the afternoon, if there's still an outflow battery out there, we could get more development tomorrow, about a 30% chance of rain. But don't be surprised if those rain chances go up if this keeps looking the way it's looking. And I think tomorrow afternoon, if there's enough instability, we could get a couple strong storms too. Uh, Wednesday, there will be more chances for rain. And really all of this is going to depend on where these outflow boundaries set up. And uh, it's going to be hard to pin down timing and location. But just know there could be some scattered downpours around. I think starting tomorrow, going all the way through Friday, the weather pattern becomes a little bit more uh, unstable. Here's a look at the Saharan dust. We've been talking about this a lot this morning, but it is worth noting we've got a big plume coming across the Atlantic right now, and right now it's in the Caribbean. We're going to get one little piece of it uh, coming in tomorrow, but I think really the bulk of it's going to be shifting in here uh, late Wednesday, but more so into Thursday and Friday, and it's just going to be sort of a haze in the atmosphere. It may uh, cause some allergy issues if uh, dust causes you problems. But it's going to be around Thursday, Friday, even into uh, the weekend. And so uh, you'll notice that we should see some nice sunsets. And we'll see what it uh, does as far as uh, mixing with rain or preventing rain. I was just talking this with Sarah about that. But right now we're still going to hold on to our rain chances as we get later into the week. High temperatures today right around 97 here in San Antonio. We're going to see some big numbers out west. So there are heat advisories posted for West Texas where temperatures can get up to the triple digits. Right now we've got 80 here in town, 72 on that dew point, and it's still quite a bit of cloud cover. This will eventually melt away. We'll see partly cloudy skies this afternoon, and that will allow temperatures to get up into the upper 90s. You can see some of that morning cloud cover. It's already cleared out. Creaso Springs to Catua, and we're seeing some warm temperatures too where the sun is out around Gonzales and Kennedy. Dew points stay high today, so the heat index is going to be a problem, especially this afternoon. It'll go probably above 100. 97, your high temperature here in town. Breezy, heat index 102 plus. We'll go 30% chance of rain tomorrow, 94, 91 on Wednesday, 40% chance of rain. That continues through Friday with rain chances tapering off this weekend. We'll be right back. 952, even with a spike in COVID-19 cases, American Airlines decided to add more flights for the month of July. And more cities are still grappling with the ongoing protests against police brutality. Here's today's 9 at 9. The number of cases in COVID-19 continue to grow in Bear County. Yesterday, 538 cases were recorded. It's the most ever recorded cases in a single day in the area. The new cases brought the total case tally to 6,882 positive cases. Doctors are sounding the alarm. At least 11 states set record highs in cases this weekend. Hospitalizations are up in 17, and the former head of the Food and Drug Administration warns that Arizona, Texas, and Florida could see exponential growth this week. This sport is in a progressive mode. 
but there's just no place for it. Outrage after NASCAR says a noose was found in the garage of Bubba Wallace, the only black driver who races full time in NASCAR's Top Cup Series. Protests against police brutality continued over the weekend, with violence erupting in some places. In New York, an NYPD officer is now suspended without pay after he was caught on camera allegedly using a chokehold. And one person is dead after a weekend shooting in Seattle's protest zone. I don't think he's fit for office. I, I don't think he has the competence to carry out the job. I'm not going to vote for him in November. Ex-staffer John Bolton discussing his book about his time in the White House, including the president's approach to foreign affairs. Bolton blames the president for putting his personal interests ahead of the country's. A union that represents many Disneyland employees wants to delay the opening of the park. The union says it does not believe the park will be safe for employees. The union criticized Disney's lack of plan to test employees for coronavirus. American Airlines now says it plans to put together another three and a half billion dollars in financing to help weather the coronavirus travel slowdowns. American Airlines has already added back flights to its scheduled for July. The suspension of cruise line operations from ports in the United States has now been extended until September 15th. The move was agreed to by companies that are members of the Cruise Lines International Association. There's currently a no-sale order issued by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention that expires July 24th. Amazon's Big Style Sale 2020 gets underway today. The company says it will include big price cuts on top name brands and Amazon's own in-house lines. It's expected to go on for at least two days. All right, we're up to 81 degrees now, 97 the high this afternoon. Heat index will be 102 plus. We'll get some rain chances in here next couple days. A few showers out there right now, mainly east of San Antonio, but our rain chances do jump up next few days could see some good downpours. Well, mission accomplished for a uh, Argentinian man named Juan Manuel Ballestero. The Argentinian sailor who was unable to fly home to uh, Portugal uh, due to the pandemic crossed the ocean alone in his modest sailboat to see his aging parents. He goes, I did it, I did it. He has exclaimed dockside when he ran, uh, reached his hometown of Mar del Plata in Argentina. So no flights, so he uh, sailed from Europe to Argentina. Yeah, he's 47 years old, and he was on there for three months, 85 days, in mm -hmm. his small boat. It, Go ahead. When he got there, they did test him when he arrived at, you know, where his destination to make sure that he did not have COVID-19. He was cleared to set foot on dry land and see his mom, 82-year-old Nilda, and father Carlos. Uh, he was actually hoped to arrive in Argentina by May 15th for his father's 90th birthday. But he missed that day. But he made it for this weekend. He did. He made it in time for Father's Day. He goes, I've achieved what I've been fighting for these last three months. Came down to this to be with family. That's why I came. Well, after crossing the Atlantic, I would think so. That is so sweet. Isn't that great? All right. Lots of perseverance. You're back at noon, Patty. I will. We'll see you then.